a couple years back. We reviewed the highly updated 2017 Polaris Sportsman XP1000, praising it for its revised styling, enhanced engine performance, and drive-by-wire throttle, offering various throttle modes. The ergonomics were also updated, with a new dual-zone shaped seat similar to Suzuki's, deeper footwells, and shorter front end bodywork for an improved sightline. We came away enamored with the engine's performance and manageability, stable plush ride, and surprising versatility for various riders and uses. The past two model years have seen a number of small but significant changes, along with a rival that's been dramatically improved. Have Polaris updates been enough to keep the sportsman competitive? Watch on and find out. ATV On Demand's test of the 2019 Polaris Sportsman XP1000 was made possible by Maxima Premium ATV Engine Oil, formulated for today's higher revving, hotter running, high performance engines. Exceeding OEM specifications, its proprietary additives create a sheer, stable polymer system, providing unsurpassed protection against wear, oxidation, viscosity, and thermal breakdown. Its wet clutch formula provides outstanding fade-free clutch performance. Maxima Premium ATV Engine Oil, available at power sports dealers everywhere. ATV On Demand's 1000cc 4x4 ATV Shootout. Subscribe now and see KNAM's highly updated Outlander 1000R take on Polaris's refined Sportsman XP1000 in a series of highly detailed rankings and special tests to see which machine is best for you. Coming summer of 2019. Polaris is offering three versions of the Sportsman XP1000 for 2019, in addition to the outstandingly fun and capable Highlifter Mud Edition that we reviewed earlier this year. There's a not-so-basic base model, the Hunter Edition, which comes decked out with nearly everything you need to head out in search of game, and our test unit, the Sportsman XP1000 Premium Edition, new for 2019. We selected it as the most comparable machine to our 2017 limited edition test unit, making evaluating updates easier. The premium edition features an upgrade from 26 to 27 inch tires, LED third brake light, cut and sewn seat cover, and premium painted plastic. The premium edition also benefits from a front bumper and a 3,500 pound heavy duty winch. The 1000 is powered by a Polaris ProStar parallel twin-cylinder engine producing a claimed 90 horsepower. It displaces 952 cc's with four valves and single overhead cams per cylinder. Electronic fuel injection delivers fuel, regulated by an electronic throttle featuring three different settings. Work mode notably reduces the total amount of throttle available, spread across the entire throw of the throttle. Standard mode offers full throttle, tuned for manageability at lower speeds. Performance mode is tuned for aggressive riding, getting you on the gas sooner. The top end is paired with a CVT-style Polaris variable transmission with high and low ranges, neutral reverse and park. Engine braking is standard, delivering braking to two or four wheels depending upon which drive mode you're in. Active descent control takes engine braking one step further, allowing you to crawl down hills, although it's not ideal for the steepest descents where braking can get you into trouble. Polaris all-wheel drive system lets you select between two and all-wheel drive with the flip of a switch. Their high-performance all-wheel drive system locks in, providing true four-wheel drive with minimum slip of the back tires, virtually any time the traction is not abundant. We've tested it on some pretty sketchy climbs, coming away quite impressed with its performance. 2018's updates included a beefed up front differential and new front axles with stronger outer CV joints. 2019 brings about a stronger drive chain in the transmission. Bushings were added to the drive clutch weights for smoother engagement and reduced wear. And finally, a 30 amp battery replaces last year's 18 amp juice box. Power delivery is as we remembered it, deceptively fast. It's excessive when you want it, yet amazingly manageable for its displacement and power. 
The electronic throttle offers precise throttle control at low speeds in work mode. Standard mode offers a good balance for long trail rides, but we got along fine switching between work and performance modes. Clutch engagement off idle is so butter smooth that you never feel overwhelmed, unless you do something stupid or simply inexperienced. Grab a handful of throttle and the clutch quickly grabs hold, sending you ripping down the trail in the middle of the RPMs. In 2017, we had our sportsman up over 78 miles per hour and still pulling, so running out of power shouldn't be an issue. At higher speeds, the CVT is pretty responsive, doing a good job of backshifting when you're racing in and out of turns. Engine braking is on the strong side, even without active descent control engaged. It's most beneficial when you're loaded down or trying to ride at a casual to intermediate pace, letting the engine do a lot of the braking for you. Dual A-arms at both ends made up to the Sportsman's steel frame. Arch lower A-arms maximize ground clearance. Combined suspension travel is still barely at the front of the class. Five-way preload adjustable shocks at all four corners control nine inches of wheel travel up front and 10 and a quarter inches out back, along with a rear sway bar helping to control body roll. Power steering was recalibrated for 2019. We felt it could benefit from a reduction in assistance over 25 miles per hour in years past. However, Polaris increased its assistance up to 45 miles per hour with a 19% increase at maximum assist. Polaris switched from 27-inch Max's Viper tires in 2017 to 27914 front and 271114 rear Duro Power Grip tires mounted on cast aluminum wheels. Dimensions remain virtually the same at a claimed 47.6 inches wide with a 53-inch wheelbase, 12 inches of ground clearance, 38-inch seat height, and 50 and 3 quarter inch overall height. With a winch, 27 inch tires, and a front bumper, the Sportsman 1000 has a hefty claimed dry weight of 878 pounds. The suspension is tuned for all day riding. It's super plush over small to medium sized hits and can hold up to a few feet of air without bottoming harshly on well executed landings. We were able to bottom the shocks a few times on jump landings and on whooped out sections of trail, but found its performance respectable for sporty riding. Without diving excessively, there is a noticeable amount of weight transfer under acceleration and braking. Stability in turns and on side hills is predictable, but no longer in a class of its own thanks to Can-Am's chassis and suspension updates. We loaded the sportsman's racks with 120 pounds front, 220 pounds rear and took it for a spin. The suspension settings felt wallowy, so we cranked spring preload to the max at both ends. This improved performance noticeably. However, the front end still dove a little more than we'd like on off-camber turns when loaded down. We feel the Sportsman could benefit from slightly firmer springs from the factory. Overall, it's close to perfect, but a bit on the soft side, which many riders will enjoy. The increase in power steering assist and Duro Power Grip tires took the XP1000's handling a small step in the wrong direction for some riders. Steering is quick and precise enough, plus it's extremely light, allowing you to maneuver the big 1000 through tight stuff with surprising ease. On high speed straightaways, steering feels a bit too light, making the ATV feel a little nervous and overly sensitive to steering input. The new power steering settings work great, for prolonged operation at low speeds while working. It should also work quite well for maneuvering big tires through deep, muddy ruts. The machine's relatively long wheelbase makes it a competent climber and helps prevent the back end from coming around too quickly during power slides. The Duro tires provide less traction in any direction than the Max's Vipers. It's possible that the V-shaped tread pattern on the Vipers would make them a slightly heavier steering tire, which would help the Sportsman's light steering. The Duro's taller height compared to the standard XP1000's tires allowed them to roll more smoothly through bumps and at a half inch of ground clearance. A single handlebar mounted brake lever activates the hydraulic disc brakes at all four corners. The right side mounted foot pedal operates the rear brakes independently. 
steel braided brake lines help deliver good stopping power and feel, although the behemoth takes a little room to rein in from warp speed. We applaud Polaris for having park in the transmission, in addition to a parking brake on the handlebars. Rack capacity is a class leading 120 pounds front and 240 pounds rear. They're steel reinforced and feature raised removable tie down points. The rear rack has a claimed 44 tie down points as well as integrated bucket rings. Both ends feature rubber sealed storage boxes under the racks, offering six gallons of combined storage. A one and a quarter inch hitch receiver is rated to tow 1500 pounds. There's also a convenient drink holder. With 120 pounds of concrete front and 220 pounds rear, we loaded the racks near capacity. We were able to confidently cinch down hard on the rear rack, but notice the ends of the front box pulling up slightly if we cinch down too hard. The 1000 is comfortably slim for its massive size. In our last test, we praised the dual zone seats narrower front and wider back section for being easy to move around on. While Polaris didn't mention any changes to the seat, you can now feel the seat pan through the foam, something we did not notice previously. Thanks in part to the soft seat foam, the seat height feels pretty low, allowing you to hang off the side for aggressive cornering. The handlebars are well within reach, but our test riders felt they were a bit on the tall side. We appreciate the generous footwell area. As with most 4x4 ATVs, we like slightly taller foot pegs in case of mud or snow buildup. Good fender coverage with factory installed fender flares do well at keeping you and the rest of the top of the machine relatively clean under typical trail conditions. We sometimes smashed our fingers between the shift lever and front fender back in 2017. This no longer seems to be an issue. In 2018, all Sportsman XP models received the 4.3 inch digital instrument display found on the 2017 Sportsman LE. All the 1000 models feature Bluetooth connectivity with your phone for missed calls and messages. Dual front and a single handlebar mounted headlight provide 150 watts of combined power. As with any 1000cc ATV, the price tag makes them less than the ideal choice as a pure work machine as you can easily buy two smaller 4x4 ATVs for the same price and get a friend to help. The fact that the Sportsman XP1000 is such a capable worker gives you a great excuse to purchase a machine that most will want for its virtually unrivaled fun factor. It should certainly be a top choice for the power hungry ATV enthusiast looking for a comfortable machine to put in lots of miles on. Learn more about the 2019 Polaris Sportsman XP1000 Premium Edition and their full line of ATVs at Polaris.com. Subscribe to ATV On Demand so you don't miss our upcoming 1000cc 4x4 ATV shootout, plus the rest of our videos as they're released. For more content like this, make sure to check out our hundreds of other videos. Thanks for watching.